Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. I'm finally doing my best of list for 2020. It was so, so hard to narrow down my list, but I wanted to do a list of my top 20 for 2020. I do have a couple honorable mentions and I definitely will be cheating a little bit with this list. All of these books will be in no particular order except for my top three of 2020. My top three list actually changed a little bit. Earlier this year, it was See It Ruin by Pam Godwin, Beach Read by Emily Henry, and Queen Moon by Kennedy Ryan, but Beach Read has been bumped down a little bit. It's still on my best of list, but just not in the top three anymore. So let me just jump into my top three romances of 2020. So the first one is one that I'm going to be cheating on. It is all the Kennedy Ryan books that I loved, which means Queen Move and the Grip series. Queen Move was one that actually did release in 2020. It's a childhood friends to lovers romance. It was actually one of our book club reads for Ravished by Romance, and we had Kennedy Ryan joining us, and it was such a fantastic chat. But it is childhood best friends to lovers. Ezra and Kimba were childhood best friends and neighbors growing up. It's a romance that is decades in the making during their early teenage years. Ezra actually ends up moving away. They lose touch, they lose contact for years until they reunite. They're older, they're wiser. Kimba is at the top of her political game. Ezra is now a single father. But they reunite and it's almost like the years between them never passed in terms of how they feel about each other. They are true soulmates and I just love how Kennedy Ryan wrote them. There's lots of drama, lots of heartache. It is just so, so good. And I couldn't not include the other series that I read from Kennedy Ryan, which is why I'm cheating and just including everything from her. I ended up reading the Grip series, which is a novella, prequel novella, Flow. Book one is Grip and then book two is Still. My particular favorite is actually Still. This book blew my mind. It was so, so beautiful. The entire series is fantastic in audio. Highly, highly recommend you listen to it. But the story itself, the romance itself between Grip and Bristol is phenomenal. There is so much hurt, so much heartache, but the love that shines between them is just incredible. The prequel flow is them meeting in college like about a decade or so before the start of Grip. It does end with them breaking up, which means the beginning of Grip is them not together. I will admit Grip had me so, so frustrated. I wanted to throw my phone across the room when I was listening to the audio, but once I got past the middle mark of Grip, it was smooth sailing from then. But the star of the series has has to be the second and final book in the series, Still. You sadly can't read Still without reading Flow and Grip, but it is so worth it. Still takes you on a journey and I was there for every moment of it. It's such a fantastic series. It's one of my new top favorite series of all time. Kennedy Ryan just blows my mind every single time. A book that was previously in my top three from earlier this year is Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. This is a historical romance. It's a dark pirate historical romance. It's just so epic with a ton of action and a lot of smut. Pam Godwin does write some dark books, so trigger warnings if you need it. There is rape and assault on the page in this book, but I love this book so much. It was nothing that I expected. We have a heroine, Bennett, who is the daughter of one of the most infamous pirates, and now she becomes one of the world's most infamous pirates. She has a love triangle between two opposites. I mean, it's a love triangle, but also kind of not. But one of the heroes is a fellow pirate. She has a second chance romance with him because he is also her ex-husband. And then the other hero is a pirate hunter who is hunting her down and actually kidnaps Bennett. So it is a wild read. So much is going on here. It's epic and I loved it so, so much. And then my new favorite of 2020, I literally read like the last week of December. This was the one that bumped down a beach read for me um, and I'm cheating once again because I'm including an entire series, the Maid series by Danielle Laurie, which is a mafia romance series. Book one is The Sweetest Oblivion, book two and my personal favorite is The Maddest Obsession, and then book three is The Darkest Temptation. These are all dark mafia romances and I loved every single one. It feels like it's been forever since I've been so obsessed with the series, but I fell so hard for the series. It was my first time reading Danielle Laurie and now I am obsessed. So book one we have a forbidden romance between our heroine and her sister's fiance. Nico is a boss in the Italian mafia and he has an arranged marriage with Elena's sister. Unfortunately, he has been arranged to marry the wrong sister because Elena and Nico have so much chemistry between them. It's hot, it's intense, there's so much good banter between Nico and Elena. It's such an addicting read and I just love these two so much. Book two, The Maddest Obsession, is my favorite of the series so far. Here we have Christian and Gianna's story. Their romance has been around seven 
seven years in the making, which means Christian has been obsessed with Gianna for seven years. So this book and this romance is the definition of morality chain. Christian is stone cold. He does not care about anything except Gianna. He's actually an FBI agent who is also working with the mafia. So he's not a good guy. None of these heroes in these books are good guys. He's a huge mystery and there's always been so much animosity between Christian and Gianna. It's kind of enemies to lovers like as much as they want each other they also kind of hate each other. Anytime they're in the same room they constantly fight. Their romance was just full of fireworks. I could not put this book down. And then the third and latest book in this maid series is The Darkest Temptation we get Christian's brother's romance Ronin. He's a leader in the Russian mafia and he ends up kidnapping our heroine Mila. So this one gets intense. He is trying to get revenge against her father who she had no idea was even involved in the Russian mafia. I was addicted to the romance with them reluctantly falling for each other because I mean he is her kidnapper and she is the daughter of his greatest enemy. But this was another great addition to the series. I'm so glad I finally finally read Danielle Laurie. If you haven't read it and you love mafia romances is you need to read the series. And then for the rest of my top 20 list, this is not going in the order of like 1 through 20, but just in the order of when I read them throughout the year. And again, there will be some more cheating in this list. So first up is Chasing Cassandra by Lisa Kleypas. This is her latest book in the Ravenel series. It's historical romance. I'm actually also including with this book the Three Wallflower series that I read in 2020 as well. But first about Chasing Cassandra, we have a cold-hearted hero in Tom. Cassandra is the heroine who wants to marry for love, so they are complete opposites. But the moment that Tom meets Cassandra, he wants her, and basically he'll do anything to be with her. The romance is so, so lovely, with Tom being quite the obsessed hero, and Cassandra showing him and teaching him that he is capable of love and loving other people. It's such a wonderful read. I mean, I love Lisa Kleypas, but this is definitely one of my favorites in the Ravenel series. And then, like I said, I'm also including the Wallflower series, books two through four. I finally read for the first time It Happened One Autumn, book two, which is an enemies to lovers romance between Lillian and Marcus. I just adore their romance. They are up there with Evie and Sebastian for me. She's an American heiress who is forced to marry. Marcus is an earl and a very eligible bachelor. They hit each other on sight. There's just so much great banter and chemistry. I also ended up reading Devil in Winter, which was a reread for me, and I honestly loved it even more the second time. This is one of Lisa Kleypas's most iconic romances. We have a shy wallflower heroine in Evie who has a marriage of convenience with the biggest rake in London, Sebastian. I just love how this shy wallflower is able to bring Sebastian who is so confident. He's hot, he's smooth, he has so much experience in the bedroom. She just brings him down to his knees. And then I finally read for the first time the final book in the wallflower series, Scandal in Spring. It was such a wonderful ending to this fantastic series. I love Daisy and Matthew. Daisy is a daydream she daydreams of falling in love and Matthew is the complete opposite of everything she wants in a man. He is a ruthless businessman who works for her father so she wants nothing to do with him but he actually has had a crush on her for forever. I adore this one. It definitely doesn't get as much love as books two or three but it is still so so good. It's romantic and sweet and passionate and it's definitely the kind of romance where you find out that the love of your life has been right under your nose the whole time. Next on my list is Creedence by Penelope Douglas. This was her standalone release in 2020. It's like a darkish reverse harem kind of romance, but she does end up with just one guy. But I love this book so much. It's so very unique and different. Nothing like I expected, so Penelope Douglas just blew me away. Tiernan, the heroine, moves in with her step-uncle and his two grown sons, and she ends up doing stuff with all of them. The guy she does end up with, though, I won't spoil who it is, but I thought it was a perfect choice. So happy with how it ended. But yes, I love this one. If you're a fan of Penelope Douglas's more darker reads, I would highly recommend it. And then a backlist book that I read and loved is Hold Me by Courtney Milan. It's kind of a new adult twist, a college romance twist on You've Got Mail. The heroine who is trans, she runs a blog and that's how Maria and Jay meet online. They start a bit of a romance, but they are anonymous, so they don't know who the other person is. They meet each other in real life and hate each other on site. It's such a fantastic enemies to lovers romance like there is some real hate here some pretty harsh insults going on I was hooked on the romance from the very beginning it was just a fantastic enemies to lovers romance one of my favorite fantasy romances of 2020 is a heart of blood and ashes by Milla Vane this one is an enemies to lovers marriage of convenience
convenience romance. We have a barbarian hero from one kingdom and the heroine from another kingdom whose parents actually murdered the hero's parents, which is why this is an enemies to lovers romance, but they do form this little truce, this deal, where they marry each other so that he can get revenge against her father. It's an epic fantasy romance. There is so much good world building, a fantastic slow burn romance, lots of forced proximity with them traveling together. It's just an epic fantasy romance. It is long, but it's so, so worth it. And the ending was perfect. I also have The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa on my list. This is a rom-com, Enemies to Lovers. We have a heroine who is jilted at the altar by the hero's brother because this hero talked his brother into leaving the heroine, which is why Lena is not exactly happy to see Max again, but they are forced to work together to be around each other. For this wedding, they've been assigned to for work. There's the good old, there's only one bed trope. It's just a fantastic rom-com. So fun, so entertaining. And then the book that is one of my new favorite historical romances of all time is Indigo by Beverly Jenkins. I have the beautiful hardcover with the original cover. I'm obsessed. This black historical romance takes place during slavery, pre-Civil War. We have main characters who are both underground railroad conductors, so they are helping slaves escape to the north. The hero Galen is the notorious Black Daniel and he ends up getting injured. He's taken to Hester's home to recover and she gives him some tough love. It's the kind of historical romance that I love where one main character takes care of the other main character while they're sick or injured in Galen's case. But their romance is stunning and beautiful. I loved Galen and Hester so much. Hester is tough and strong and intelligent and Galen is just completely head over heels in love with her. He falls in love with her while she heals him at her home but she's very stubborn so he slowly starts to woo her and get her to fall in love with him back. It's such a beautiful romance. I can't emphasize this enough. It is one of my new favorite books from Beverly Jenkins. Another top favorite of 2020 is Don't Go Stealing My Heart by Kelly Siskind. This one is a rom-com but it does have some of its more serious moments but it is so sweet and charming. I adored it. We have a Robin Hood heroine who steals from the rich to give to the poor and her latest mark who owns this priceless Van Gogh is of course the hero. Except it turns out that Jack is actually such a nice guy. He is sweet, he is endearing, they are so adorable and cute together. Jack is an Elvis impersonator. They both own bearded dragons with matching names. Hers is Lucy and his is Ricky Ricardo. It's just a fun and charming read. I love the small town vibes as well. There is of course some angst and some drama with the whole stealing from him thing. But overall it's such a feel-good read. I loved it. And then I have to have another whole series on my list and that is the Uptown Girl series by Joanna Shu. It is a Gilded Age historical romance series which means it's set in New York City. Book one is The Rogue of Fifth Avenue and my favorite of the series. Book two is The Prince of Broadway and book three is The Devil of Downtown. So these three books are about three sisters, the Green Sisters. They come from a very respectable family but they all get into some sort of trouble and their heroes are a bit of troublemakers as well. Book one is about Mamie, the oldest Green Sister who is trying to be a bit of a Robin Hood. Her family's lawyer Frank is trying to get her out of trouble and he has a bit of a darker past with him having grown up in the darker side of New York City. The whole series by the way is so hot. If you love steamy historical romances you have to read Joanna Shoup. In book two we have the middle sister Florence who is learning from the casino owner Hero Clay because she wants to build her own casino who caters to women exclusively. The youngest sister Justine ends up falling for the top gangster in New York City. She's a good girl, he's not a good guy, but their romance was fantastic. All three books are so amazing. I have become a huge Joanna Shoup fan because of the series. Another book that I loved was Girl Gone Viral by Alicia Rye. This is a bodyguard romance. We have a shy former model heroine who ends up going viral on Twitter. The internet is trying to uncover who she is, trying to track down who she is, and she's like absolutely not. She can't handle that kind of attention, so she gets the help of her bodyguard Jazz, who she has been pining for for the longest time. They go away to his family's home out in the country, and here they're forced into some good proximity together and also forced to confront each other's feelings. It's such a sweet romance, very slow, but I love them together. If you love lots of pining in your romances, this book is perfect. And then we have Beach Read by Emily Henry. It's an opposites attract kind of romance. We have two writers who are neighbors for the summer. Gus the hero writes literary fiction and January the heroine writes romance. They're both experiencing a writer's block, so they make a deal with each other to write in the other person's genre to get them out of their slump and to go on these little dates to help them brainstorm. It's so fun and charming. I love the banter so much between these two, but I will say I wouldn't necessarily call this a rom-com because there are some pretty heavy topics that they talk about in this book, but still 
Love. This is easily one of my favorite books of 2020 and I'm so excited to read more from Emily Henry. Another old school historical romance that I adored last year was The Secret by Julie Garwood. This one was an impromptu buddy read with some of my close friends and we all ended up loving this book. It's a medieval historical romance with a Scottish hero, a Scottish layered hero. Ian is quite the old school alpha hero but I love him. I loved his romance with Judith. They are so endearing. They clash like crazy but they're still so perfect for each other. It was such a charming romance and I can definitely see why so many people love Julie Garwood's historicals. Another historical romance that I ended up loving was All's Gone Bothered by Kerrigan Byrne. This is the second standalone in the Double You Know series but all of them can be read as standalones. We have a curvy heroine Cecilia who ends up inheriting a gambling establishment from her aunt. The hero is a Lord Chief Justice and Cassius is actually trying to investigate Cecilia because of this gambling establishment. He's this huge hulking Scot and even though Cassius is trying to investigate Cecilia and kind of sees her as an enemy, he falls for her and ends up worshipping her. They're both so perfect for each other. There's a bit of intrigue involved as well with some mystery going on, but this book was fantastic. I loved it. It's one of my new favorites from Kerrigan Byrne. One of my new favorite authors from 2020 was Adriana Herrera and that was because I read American Dreamer and fell so hard for this book. This is an MM romance between a food truck owner who makes Afro-Caribbean food who moved from New York City to upstate New York and he falls in love with the town's librarian. It's such a sweet and wonderful romance. I loved Jude and Nesto so much. It's a foodie romance which I always love. The audiobook was amazing. The narration was fantastic. Honestly the whole series is great but this one definitely my favorite. And then we have the one novella on my list. This was my favorite novella of 2020 and that is set by Alexandria House. I love this one so much mainly because our main characters Set and Karima knew each other in high school. He was a bad boy, she was a good girl, and Set had the biggest crush on Karima, but nothing ever happened between them until their high school reunion where they start up this friends with benefits thing. So this does take place over a number of years, but the romance, it's so sweet and also very, very smutty and hot. But we just have a hero who cherishes and worships the heroine and I just love to see it. Of course, Alona Andrews is on my list. Alona Andrews is always on my list. I love their 2020 release, Emerald Blaze, which was book five in the Hidden Legacy series. I love this fantasy paranormal romance series. We've got magic, magic powers, it's epic. Even though this is book five, this is the second book for this couple's romance between Catalina and Alessandro. So we get more romance development between them and we get another bad guy, lots of action, lots of suspense. It's just another great Hidden Legacy book. I highly, highly recommend the series if you love any sort of paranormal or fantasy romance. And then one of the sweetest romances that I read last year was One Hot Italian Summer by Karina Halley. We have a writer heroine who goes to Italy as a sort of writer's retreat, but the villa that she stays in in Tuscany is not quite as empty as she thought. The owner is a single father and he's there with his young son. Claudio was Italian perfection. I loved him. His son is so cute and adorable, but Claudio and Grace start up this sort of summer fling. The romance was wonderful. The setting of Italy, of Tuscany was perfection. It was such a sweet and feel-good romance. And then finally, 20th on my list is the Blood and Ash series by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Book one is from Blood and Ash and book two is The Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. It's a fantasy romance series with vampires and I love these two books so so much. I know everyone else loved them too but it is so worth the hype. It did take me a bit to get into from Blood and Ash but once I did it blew me away. I was so hooked onto Poppy and Cass. They are perfect together. Such great chemistry and banter and the ending from, from Blood and Ash. It was one of my favorite endings that I've ever read. Book two was a great follow-up as well. We got some really great world building, some more romance development, and it does end on another cliffhanger and now I'm dying dying for book three. That is my list of my top 20 books slash authors slash series of 2020. I do have some honorable mentions as well that I want to include. One of them is the Happy Ever After playlist by Abby Jimenez. The main characters connect over this lost dog and I have a bit of a, an epistolary romance where they connect over text. Beguiling the Beauty by Sherry Thomas which is such an angsty historical romance. The heroine is trying to get revenge against the hero by making him fall in love with her but she 
ends up falling in love with him back. The Birthday List and Letters to Molly by Devney Perry, which are both such heart-wrenching small-town romances. Love Hard by Nalini Singh, which is a single father romance and a rugby romance. The House on the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune, which is not technically a romance, it's more on the fantasy side, but it's got an MM romance and such adorable kids with magic powers. And What the Wind Knows by Amy Harmon, which is like an Irish version of Outlander, so it's got some time travel. Those are all the books that I had to mention in my best of 2020 list. Let me know if you've read any of these books or any of these authors. 2020 was a fantastic reading year and hopefully 2021 is the same. Links to all of these books will be down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!